We've got a really fun, whimsical clock that we're gonna to put together here. This would be perfect for a child's bedroom. You can either um, lay it on a table or actually hang it up on a wall as well. So let's take a look at what we need to do to get started here. Now, just like our previous clocks, um, we've got some foam board here and that's just to kind of sturdy up the platform for uh, the actual mechanism that's gonna go inside. And if you don't have this and you want to add some stability to it, you can, you can cut this out a few times, maybe four or five times, and just glue these pieces together. That'll help. Um, we do recommend that you use the foam core, um, but you, know, you don't have to. But if you do plan on using paper and you don't have it at this thickness, um, you may have to add um, some um, score tape or this, um, this sort of tape to kind of bring back the mechanism a little bit so that it doesn't protrude too much, but you can kind of get the feel for that. So anyway, um, I've kind of cut this somewhat to size, and rather than trying to cut two of the sides perfectly, I'm gonna just leave the edges that were already there and just cut two of the sides. No sense in trying to cut all four sides if you already have two perfectly straight sides already. So just rotate that. And this doesn't have to be perfect. No one's gonna see this, but try to get it within the guidelines here of this little template that I'm using to help the sizing. Okay, and then also, we're gonna need to cut the center of this out. So I would probably just create like a little cross or a little pizza sort of shape in here to help with the cutting. It does get a little bit harder as you go. Okay, and then maybe just draw or cut a little circle. And it might kind of help to use an up and down motion rather than just a straight cut because there are some lines already here However you do it is fine. I'm not gonna to pretend to be a master of the X-Acto knife, because I'm not. That's why we have cutting machines. <laughs> okay, so just pop that off. And just clean this up. This little paper backing. Might just trim that off. We can begin by doing some of the assembly here. Um, I've got my main red piece here. I've got this blue piece that's gonna go right on there. Just make sure you're not obstructing the hole. So let's go ahead and begin with that. And this is pretty much just a, a big paper piecing um, project. So it's, it's very simple. Um, not much to it at all. Now, hold on. before we glue this down, let me just double check something real quick here. I'm pretty sure that this, okay, so as you can see, this piece as well is not symmetrical. Okay, so you wanna make sure that you are gluing it on correctly. Okay, the hole, for the sake of this project, had to be put in um, a specific location. Okay, so there you can see that we've got an even border going around that way. So I would just flip it just to make sure you don't lose track of the orientation of this piece. Okay, let's get our glue on here. Nice and thin. You don't want the paper warping. This is kind of, kind of like the canvas for this entire project. Most of it's gonna be hidden away, but you still wanna do the best work we can do. Okay, make sure you get some of that glue out to the edge. Just like that. And let's flip this guy over. And just using the little hole there as our guide, get it in place, make sure that you've got a nice even border all the way around. Okay, I'm gonna lift this up so I can kinda adjust it if necessary. OK, 
Okay. That looks good. Now, one other thing too I wanna to point out, just to make sure that we have the orientation of this correct. Um, let's take a look at the main pieces for our structure, okay? Now you'll notice that on two of these tabs here, let me see if I can get them in the frame, there's a letter T, okay? That T means top. So that's the top of the clock. This is the bottom of the clock. Now let's just make sure that when we put this down, that it in fact matches up with that hole correctly and doesn't encroach on any of the score lines. I had it right. Now you see here, when this hole is here, it's encroaching on this side here. So just make sure to identify correctly which part is the top. This is the top, this is the bottom. As you can see, it matches up perfectly with that score mark. It's not obstructing any of the score marks. It's not coming off or bleeding in on that piece there. So again, this is your top and we will solidify that it is the top by placing this piece on here. Okay, this is our little fence or our little brick wall that Humpty is gonna be sitting on. We're gonna begin with this gray piece that kind of extends a little bit outward over the blue. And then once we get this down, we will forever know which side is the top and which part is the bottom. Okay, so let's get that glued down. The bottom of this is gonna be flush with the bottom of our turquoise or blue color that we see here. Okay, so get that nice and lined up and glue that down. There we go. And our next layer is gonna be the little stone cutout layer. And as you can see, it's gonna match up with this part here and then the little individual stone pieces will uh, kind of terminate right at the bottom of that gray piece. Okay, so might have to work semi-quickly here. There's a lot of little details to take care of. I would just kind of do your best to get the glue into as much of these little detailed areas as possible. Don't obsess about getting it everywhere. Just need just a little bit of glue goes a long way with these really delicate pieces. And you may have to go back and revisit this little section here. Okay, so again, uh, as far as placement on this, just focus on getting this top rectangular part lined up correctly and then the rest of it will fall into place just like so. All right. If you have a little bit of glue that seeped out, just kind of dab it off. I wouldn't brush it just yet because these pieces are pretty delicate. So just dab it. And if you have a little left over, don't even worry about it. Okay, now we've got this purple piece. It's gonna go right on here. And let's go ahead and Get our glue on our purple piece. Make sure you get that glue right out to the edge like that. And just glue that down right on top there. Make sure you've got it nicely aligned. There we go. All right, so now, as I mentioned, we know which part is the top, which part is the bottom, okay? There we go. All right, let's put this off to the side for a second and let's work on Humpty Dumpty himself, okay? So I've sort of already kind of pieced things together without gluing them, just to kind of remind me where they go. I always try to do like a dry run of everything um, before I do the actual videos. But in this case, I'm gonna have to take these off and I pretty much remember where everything goes now. Okay, so your black layer is gonna be the back layer. And you see this little 
this little scallop down here, that's gonna help you with the alignment on all these pieces. Okay, so back layer, black layer in back, white layer in the middle, and then the colored layer on top there. Let's get our glue on this piece here. And let's try to work as quickly as we can, but let's not get crazy. Try to get nice thin lines of glue on this entire thing here. Try to get one out to the perimeter as well. Okay, let's get that glued on. Using that little, that little lip, I wanna call it a nipple. I'm just gonna call it a nipple. And get that glued in place. Make sure that you've got it overlapping correctly. And just press that down, squeeze that glue. Okay, and moving on, I can go ahead and put our green layer on. This one should be a little bit easier. Kind of a big piece. If you want to use like spray adhesive, you can. Just make sure that you get the repositionable type because that stuff is not forgiving at all. I've ruined many a projects with the spray adhesives. Okay, so again, just kind of grab that, that little nipple piece there at the bottom. I don't know what else to call it, I'm sorry. Okay, there we go. You can just get that in place. Nice and thick. Okay, this piece is actually gonna get pop dotted onto that other piece that we already worked on here um, at the end. Or not, eh, pop dots are fine, or foam squares, whatever you decide you wanna use is totally fine. Um, okay, so now we can go ahead and begin piecing uh, Mr. Humpty Dumpty here. And there's, um, there's a lot of little pieces, but it's okay. We're just gonna go one at a time here. And we can begin with his little cheeks. Okay, so there's two. Just make sure that you grab the right one. I don't think you can really choose the incorrect one because the cheeks are gonna be to the right side of his eyes. Okay, and just make sure that you're not obstructing the eyeballs when you place that down. So go ahead and get that in place. Grab his other little cheek. Just like that. And let's get that glued down. Just make sure you're lining it up with that cutout. Here we go. Okay. We have a pink little nose for him, and that's gonna go right inside that little black area. The black that remains should look like his little nostrils, basically. I'm gonna dab that, I had a little too much glue on there. Okay, so just pop that in there like a little puzzle piece. Push it up so that the black mostly remains in the bottom, and if there's a little bit on the side, that's okay too. Okay, so it should look like that. Can grab his lips and I'm gonna glue his lips on. I am just gonna try to get little dots on here, little tiny little dots all the way around his lips. He's got some really, really nice red lips. Okay, just match that up with the bottom of the mouth, just like that. Okay, I guess I really wouldn't want a clock coming out of my mouth, but this is kind of a fantasy piece, so that's okay. All right, now, all right, let's give him some clothes, and we can begin with this piece here, his shirt. Okay, it's gonna go like that. So let's get our glue 
on this piece here. It's been a long time since I read children's books. I went to a Catholic school, so I don't know that they really read this stuff to us a lot, but it's okay. Humpty Dumpty is really cool. Okay, so just uh, you can see here there's a little cutout, uh, how it kind of goes up and then just follow the arms basically. That is your guide. Okay, all right, our next layer for his uh, little shirt here is this yellow layer that's gonna go on top of the orange. Okay, so get your glue on there. And depending on the age of your child or your grandchild, um, they may actually be able to help you with putting Humpty together. And this would be a really cool project for you guys to work on together. Um, I've gotten some feedback from you guys saying that you had two-year-olds that were putting together our monster Valentines. And I was quite impressed with that because I made some Valentines with, some, with a four and a five-year-old and I could only, it could only handle the larger pieces. Um, so if they can do that, kudos. All right, let's put, let's put part of his pants on here. He's wearing striped red and white pants. I just think that's a funny word, pants. All right, let's get our glue on there. And, and this is, in essence, a, a little puzzle piece. Everything should fit nicely. Use that little, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not gonna go there. Just that piece there. It's part of his shirt. There we go. <laughs> okay. All right, and we've got little hand pieces. This piece here that's got a, a nice little curve, that's gonna go in this corner here. Okay, so actually down here, sorry. He's got, he's got little, uh, little puffs on his shirt. Okay, so let's get that in place. It's gonna go down at the bottom here, just match up where his thumb is, okay. And let's grab the other hand. Humpty's looking pretty, pretty cool so far. All right, let's get that other one down there. Just match up the thumb. Get it right pushed up against this little green piece. You might have different colors, and that's fine. Okay, and you can get his little bow tie on there. I'm going to put this piece down first. Mine's in gray. Yours may be in a different color. Okay, and just uh, follow the little, uh, little indented area there at the top of his bow for proper placement. Don't want to put it on upside down. Okay, and then we have two more pieces for his bow. There's a really skinny piece. That skinny piece is going to go at the top. Okay, and a little bit of that gray at the top is going to show, or whatever color you're using. I'll show you here what I mean in a second. Okay, it's going to go towards the bottom of the existing bow so that we show a little bit of that color from behind. Okay, and this is moving along pretty quickly, actually, quicker than I thought. Okay. Now remember that when you watch these videos, this is my first time putting this project together. Okay, so as long as you can follow along with me, yours is going to look just as good. Okay, all right, so we've got that. The feet and the legs we're going to put on last. Um, we can actually, uh, we'll put the hat on in a little bit here. And I think his hair, we're going to leave his hair until after we put on his hat. All right, so the hair and the hat pieces, we're going to leave those alone for just a second. Now, in your extras folder, you're going to find um, some circles, okay? 
Now, in our case, the clock mechanism that we purchased came with some numbers. And I'm actually gonna put those numbers on these yellow discs. Now, if you, if you bought a clock mechanism that didn't come with numbers, in your extras folder, you'll find actual numbers that you can use, okay? But I'm gonna go ahead and get all 12 of these little discs glued on on this green piece here. And you'll notice that we have some little identifiers to help you with centering and placement. So as long as you follow those little notches there, you should be able to get everything nice and perfectly aligned. So at this point in the video, if you are cutting out your numbers, you're gonna to wanna to assemble those. The black layer is gonna go underneath the um, yellow layer, okay? And it should expose the numbers. And assemble those, and then go ahead and glue those into place here. Okay, I'm gonna get mine glued down and I'm also gonna put my numbers down before I continue doing any more work on this. So I will meet you at that point when I've got all of my, all of my little discs glued into place and all of my numbers in place as well. And then we will continue on in the process here. Okay, so as you can see here, I have my numbers all in place. And uh, at this point, we can go ahead and begin working on his hat and his legs and his hat. I've got this one solid piece here. I've got a purple piece here that I'm gonna glue down. Just put that on there. And that's gonna line up with the little brim of the hat and just focus on the feather as well. Oops, let me just get that down. And I've got a little purple piece for the top of the hat. And get that on there. It's a fun little puzzle. And just get that flush with the top just so there's a little bit of the white peeking through there, just like that, okay? And next we're gonna put down the little gray piece of his feather. Ours is gray, again, yours, you might do this in completely different colors, which is totally fine. That's what we would expect. And just match that up with the existing section there. Make sure you've got it right on top push that down. If you have a little bit of the underlying color bleeding through, that's fine too. It kind of adds to the effect. Okay, and then the feather. It's got a feather in his cap. Put that on there. This would be a good time to break out my pick-me-up tool, but it's not that small. You can still work with it with your bare hands, so that's fine. Get that nice and aligned, press down, there we go. And then the little band around his hat. Let's get that in place. And that should be flush with the feather portion and should terminate on the right hand side there like that. It's gonna go slightly below this part here, the brim of the hat, okay. So that looks great. And let me get my foam squares out. And kind of beat up a little bit, but that's okay. Throw a few foam squares on here. I think three should probably be enough to hold them in place. You could, you could technically glue this down. I just want to add a little dimension to this. So we're going to just use some foam squares to give it a little more life. And these are the ones that the backings don't peel off of very easily. So I just kind of use an X-Acto knife to help me. Okay, and just match it up with the existing section there. 
So that looks like that. That looks really cute. And the 12 is going to be slightly covered up, but everyone knows that's a 12, so we should be fine. And now at this point, we can go ahead and put his little blonde curl in place since we know where the hat's going to be. And I'm just going to put that slightly, I'm going to tuck it under there a little bit. Let's take a look at his little feet and his shoes. I kind of got everything lined up a little bit already just to help the process here. Make sure I don't lose anything. Okay, so for each of these, we've got a white portion and then a purple and then a blue. The purple portion is going to match up with that little section perfectly. So let's get our glue on his shoe. <laughs> I'm rhyming. Okay, just match that up perfectly. I'm going to pick that up to make it easier to kind of nudge it around if I have to. There we go. Okay, and then the blue part is going to go right on that, right over that little uh, cutout there so you know the proper placement because we've got the cutout there for you. Okay, so let's get that in place. Just match it up with that cutout. A little bit of that underlying color should pop through around the bottom and the side there. <coughs> Okay, now this little piece here that kind of looks like a little icicle, um, that is going to go right here. So that's part of his little stockings that he's wearing, or his pants, or whatever it is that Humpty wears. And it's like a little puzzle piece, and so just pop it in there so it hugs the shoe. Okay, and then there's these two pieces here. Now, there's going to be a total of four that look somewhat similar. Um, now the first layer that goes on here, it's a little straight here, and then this one is a little curved. Okay, so grab the straight edge piece, and let's get that glued into place. And you want to position that um, pretty much on his leg there at a straight portion. Okay, you might need to nudge it up a little bit so that it hugs it nicely. If it's a little bit higher or lower, it's okay. It'll still look good. Then grab the rounder piece, and let's get that in place. And that's going to go almost at the top, not quite, right about there. Okay, so there's his first leg, and we're just going to repeat that on the other side. And then we're going to grab some of our foam dots and foam dot his leg to the actual clock face. Okay, so let's get that down. And let's get the blue part of his shoe in place. And again, just make sure that you're following that little notch, that little cutout there for proper placement. There we go. Looks good. Okay, we've got this little sliver piece here. place here along the side. Let me pick that up real quick and just shove it right in there as far as it'll go. Okay. Again, the next layer here is going to be straight on the sides. It's not going to be curvy like the top piece. So let's get that in place. There's good. Okay, and our next little piece here. Way too much glue on that. That's okay. And just get that last little piece there. 
Oops. Oh. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to flip that over and I'm going to get some foam squares on his, his leg. I think, uh, I think two should do, maybe three. I don't want to overdo it. Get that on there. Get that on there. Now, before I peel that off, I'm going to kind of just put it in place and feel it out and see if that's strong enough. It is. I think two will do just fine. Just peel the backing off of this. go. The other one. <clears throat> and just match this bottom part up with this little little part there. Okay, should be hanging straight down like so. Okay. I'm going to bend this back a little bit. And our other one here, and just pop that right in place. You can see that there's this little, little curve right here, and that is to help you with the placement as well. Just make sure that you get that nice and centered there. There we go. All right, so Humpty is pretty much all done here, okay? And um, I'm gonna wait. We're gonna, we're gonna pop dot this um, on after the entire box is assembled. I don't want to do it just yet. Okay, so we can go ahead and put that off to the side for now. Um, while we're at it here, we may as well just put the uh, put the little hanger together. Okay, and the way we're going to do this. Okay, so what we want to do is we're going to fold this at the score mark. Ultimately, this is all going to get glued together, um, so it doesn't really matter. Let's glue that bottom section together first, just to get it in there. And just make sure that you have it nice and aligned. Okay, this part is actually gonna go into a box, into the box, the actual clock structure itself. But we're gonna glue these two pieces together now. And then we're gonna sturdy this thing up even more by gluing two additional little pieces to it to thicken it up even more because we want it to be nice and strong. Okay, so we're going to take these two pieces and glue them to both sides of this piece here that we just assembled. Okay, so push that down and then flip it um, over to the other side and get that piece down. No one's really going to see this part, so don't have to worry about it being immaculate, but it's a pretty straightforward piece to put together, so I don't think you can really mess it up. Okay, great. So now that piece is together. I'm going to kind of give it one fold because ultimately we're going to glue it to the inside of this piece here, like this. Okay, and that's going to be used to hang off of a wall should we decide to do that. So. Actually, may as well do that now. Let me go ahead and feed this in here. I'm going to flip this out. And I'm just going to put some glue right here. I'm going to spread that out. Cover as much of that area as I can. And then just push that down and hold it in place. Make sure you've got your texture side up. Okay, and now this is, this is the top, obviously. Okay. All right, so there we go. Now, once that has a chance to set, you can kind of move this back and forth a little bit, and that should be perfect for hanging. Okay, so we're on the last leg here of our assembly, and I'm going to grab the main structure. Okay, now, as you can see here again, you've got a T up here, and you've got a T up here. You want to make sure that you keep those um, in the correct 
order, in the correct place. You want them at the top. Let's go ahead and fold everything at our score marks here. Okay. There we go. There is that. Okay, so we're going to connect these two pieces together. Again, make sure that your T's are at the top. Okay, and we're going to begin, oh, I never folded that one. We're going to begin by putting glue on this tab here. Okay, kind of go thin on this. And get that glue right up to the edge. There we go. All right, and then you can do it either way. I like to kind of work from the inside. Just get this aligned nicely on both sides. And once you have it, just push it down. Give it a second, flip it over like this. And just make sure that that is nice and straight there. Okay, let's have a look, looks good, it looks like we could, maybe could have gotten a little bit more glue in there, I'm going to clean that up a little bit, I'm just going to tear off some of this adhesive backing, I just have a, a little area here that I just didn't get that glue out to the edge as, as well as I could have, so I'm just putting a little bit of glue on this little backing piece and I'm going to slide that right in there and just add a little bit of glue to that area that just didn't get enough. I'm just going to hold that down for a second while it sets. It's going to give me a nice clean looking seam. Okay. Again, just keep your eye on that T. Make sure that you're in the right place. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and grab my, my foam piece now. And I'm going to get my glue on this nice and thin. This is paper going on paper, so it should hold nicely. Just focus on making sure that you have good coverage on there so that it sticks nicely. And just pop that right over that hole. Make sure you're not obstructing it. Make sure that you are not obstructing any of the folds here. Okay, that looks good, nice and centered. Okay, again, if you don't have foam core or foam board, you can take this piece and cut it out multiple times, layer it just to thicken it up. The idea is to make that face really um, sturdy so that when you put your little mechanism on there, it's not shredding up the paper. And definitely recommend using the foam core, okay? All right, so now you can go ahead and if you want to put this piece on there to kind of pretty it up, you can do that. I did that with my other clock. So I'm going to do that as well, just because I, I like it nice and pretty inside and out. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it will definitely help give this thing uh, a nicer look, a nicer finish on the inside as well. So get that on there. Okay, we can put the clock mechanism piece in later. Let's just get our box assembled here and we'll be done in no time. Okay, all right, so again, T for top. My top is right there. And first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna close this up by gluing this piece to this piece here. Okay, so let's get our glue 
onto this large tab here. And again, try to try to go pretty thin on the glue application on this because it's got nothing to hide this. So if you get um, too much glue on there and it leaves a lump, it won't look as good. I'll try to get that glue out to the very edge. And that's gonna help as well. Bring that piece over and get it nice and centered. Nice and centered on there. And push down to close this shape up. I might need to go in and do some cleanup there. Okay, you can probably take and pinch that a little bit. Not too much. Okay, and I think my glue started drying pretty quick there on one side before I had a chance to really hold it down. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on this guy here, and I'm gonna paint a little extra glue in these areas that just didn't stick very well for me. And then I can go ahead and push those down and hold those down in place while it sets. You can even get your finger in here as well, or through the top, if you need a little bit of leverage to get that in place. Okay, just be patient, let that set. Um, a few more, few more things here and we'll be done. Okay, just again, be patient, let that glue get a good hold. All right, so again, there's our top. Now at this point, you can go ahead and glue this piece down like so. So let me move this out of the way for a second. And we're going to get glue on these tabs here. Okay, work that glue out to the edge. Nice line along the edge. As I mentioned, this is lately, probably within the last year or so, every project that you see me put together, it's my first time putting it together and I'm doing it on camera which kind of makes it even more difficult. Um, so they come out looking really nice, which means that as long as you follow along and take your time, yours are gonna look great too. That's the key though, just take your time. And one thing that you can do that I can't because I'm filming this is get your face all up in there and really look at things really closely. All right, so flare these out just a tad so that as you're pushing this down, you're grabbing more of that surface area of the paper and go ahead and push that in and push it down. Run your finger along the edges there and you can push it down like that. Use your table if you want. I think the thumb method works better for me. And that came out real nice actually. Okay, great. All right, so we're just gonna repeat the same process with the top here. I'm gonna get our glue on the tabs. Nice line right along the edge. Side tab. Nice line. Side tab, nice line, I'm gonna spread that out right up to that edge. Make it nice and clean. Let me move this out of the way. Okay, other side, there we go. All right, so flare them out just a tad and then go ahead and close this up. And voila, our structure is pretty much done here. Just make sure that you kind of nudge this thing over a little bit to center it. Make sure it's nice and centered. Run your finger along the edges here, pushing down, getting that 
glued in place. Okay, I think mine's just a tad off, but I don't think anyone's really going to notice. Okay, there we go. That looks good. I'm going to have a little bit of a area there that I'm not completely satisfied with. So again, I'm just going to grab my little, my little guy here and tuck them under, paint a little extra glue on this section here, and just push this down and hold it until that sets nicely for me. Okay. Okay, so we're pretty much at the tail end of this now. All right, so we've got the box assembled. Um, make sure you just kind of keep track of what the top is. But at this point, um, as long as everything sits nice and flush, and the hole isn't obstructed, you know you've got it in the right place. We're gonna put glue on this. We're gonna glue this on the face. And then we're gonna put glue on this, on the inside part, that's where we glue the tab. And we're gonna glue this in place on the back. This is gonna be our little door here. And actually, one other thing too, is this little flower goes on the back here. And that's gonna be used to help you kind of grab the door so that you can open this more easily. Leave a little bit of, little, like three petals up at the top there. Okay, so let that dry, obviously. That's gonna get glued to the back. Make sure that you just kinda follow the um, cutout there, and then this is gonna get glued to the front. Okay, so I've got my front on, I've got my back on. Now it's time to put Humpty on here. Okay, so right now things may look a little strange, almost as if I kind of jumped ahead a little bit, and that's okay, um, because I realized towards the end that I made a boo-boo. Um, I actually pop dotted this or used um, foam squares, but I should have glued it down flat. So that's what you're gonna wanna do. You're gonna wanna glue this down flat completely. Okay, so let's go ahead, and you can see where my little dots were and it's okay, it's not a big deal. I was able to use an X-Acto knife and get them off, so everything worked out. But you wanna go ahead and make sure that you glue this. You can um, use foam squares on the legs and the hats. Just make sure they're not too thick, otherwise your little mechanism may um, bump into it. So that's okay. All right, so we're gonna glue this down flat. Just make sure that you're not obstructing that hole. Make sure that the 12 is nice and centered. Okay, and just push that down. And just hold that down. Apply as much pressure as you can. Well, even pressure, not, don't crush it, <laughs> obviously. And, uh, and then follow the remaining steps. Uh, the, the next few steps, you're probably gonna be putting these on and things of that nature. Um, so don't worry that they're on right now. We'll be putting those on here shortly. But again, the hat and the feet um, can be um, foam squared. Now we have a few little pieces here that I'm also going to use some foam squares on, or circles in this case. Oops. And those are gonna go in the corners. Let me grab my tiny little squares here. And add one right about there. And another one right about there. Let's peel that backing off. Oops. Okay, and that's going to go right about there. And we're going to put a pretty little flower on there as well. This guy here you can grab a little dowel and just curl the petals up 
I'm going to finish that off with a little rhinestone. Okay. So let's just grab and get a little bit of glue on the back of this guy here. There we go. And pop that right in the center. Just like that. And same thing with this guy here. And then there's a few little bushes at the bottom that we're going to put some pop dots on our foam squares. I accidentally pulled the backing off of that one. Okay, so we'll get that in place on the other side and then um, put the flower on there. And then we'll talk about the little mechanism and how we're going to get that in place. Okay, so again, just try to keep a nice even border all the way around. Try to get it on the same plane as the other one. That looks good. Kind of curl that up a little bit. Grab your other flower. Give those petals a little curl. Get them glued down. Kind of once you. Once you train them with your dowel, you can just use your fingers to kind of bring them up even more. And since we're kind of pushing this down, it may, uh, may flatten it out a little bit. So you can always, after the fact, go in and clean that up. Okay. And let's take a look at our little bushes here. Now the bushes are going to go in this direction here and we're going to pop dot them right about there. All right, so let's flip that over and get some, put one there. I'm going to work on both of these at the same time. Okay, get a round one that fits perfectly there. And then for this one here, I think I can get another round one there. That one is a different story, but that's okay. And we'll pop one there. This is almost like um, almost like working on one of our paper sculptures, actually, which is kind of cool. You guys that have made our paper sculptures, you are familiar with this. Okay, let's get the backing off of these. Oops. All right. So this one here, we're going to, this section here, the bottom of it, we're going to keep that on the same plane, but we are going to kind of um, let it hang over a little bit, just like that little purple piece there. Okay. So just like that. So let's get rid of those guys and peel that off. Okay, and same thing, keep it on a level plane at the bottom, but bring it off to the side, just a tiny little bit so it hangs off, just like that. Okay, so it's a really cute piece, uh, very whimsical and dimensional, and um, that's pretty much it for the paper portion. Now again, we've got our little mechanism here. You wanna go ahead and get your, um, uh, get your little battery in there. And depending on the mechanism that you have, um, some of them come with these two little pieces, a washer and this little hex nut. And this thing actually holds the entire mechanism in place. So you may not even need to put hot glue on this. Let me show you how that works. So we're just gonna take this and feed it through. I usually put the battery compartment towards the bottom. I believe that that is the correct way of doing it. And just poke that through. It should get a, a decent amount of clearance. 
and then you put the little washer on followed by the little hex nut and just tighten that and that actually kind of holds Humpty in place and it holds the little mechanism in place as well. It tightens it up so you don't even need to put glue on there. Okay, so once you have that in place, the next thing you're going to do is take the, uh, this is the hour hand, and it looks like it has a little um, hex nut built into it. I'm just going to slide that on, and it's going to have a little bit of resistance. You don't want to push too hard because it really won't go very far. As long as it's on there and it seems somewhat tight, you should be good. You can test it by rotating that wheel, just making sure that it goes, and it should clear the hats and the feet. If it doesn't, you can always bend it just a tiny little bit, okay, but you shouldn't have to. All right, then our little minute hand here, it's only going to fit on here one way. The little metal piece here uh, is, has a specific shape, okay, so you just kind of thread that on there. Then you've got this little uh, gear looking nut. And you're going to screw that on. That's going to hold the minute hand in place. And then the second hand is going to go over that. And it kind of caps everything off. Let me put this down on my surface. It might be a little bit easier to work with. You just kind of screw that on. And that'll tighten this down. And hold our minute hand in place. Let me use my other hand here. There we go. I think I've got it. There we go. So again, let's just test that out. There's my wheel. There we go. So cool. And then finally, we just cap it off with our little second hand. Okay. Pop that right on. Now let me see if I have a Looks like a double A battery. Let's test this thing out. The really cool part about this is that there's a little door here. So if you do ever need to replace the battery, that's very easy to do. Oh, one other thing that I want to mention is if you do put, plan on putting this on a table, it should sit just fine. If for some reason it doesn't, you can always take and put some, um, you know, little marbles or something that um, a mouse won't try to eat, I guess. If you're hanging it up, obviously you don't need to worry about it, just hang it up. Um, but, you know, fill it with some glass beads or something to weigh it down. I mean, it's it's okay. It's, it's staying up just fine, but it may be a little front heavy. Um, so there you go. Stay on top of all things Dreaming Tree and engage with us today. Get the latest news and enter in our giveaways on Facebook. Get inspired by following us on Pinterest. Be the first to see our new product launches on Instagram. Do you prefer Twitter? Yep, we're there too. Watch our beautiful product trailers and assembly tutorials on YouTube. For more information, visit www.3dsvg.com. Live, craft, love, and dream.